Research methods. Experiments are a type of research method and involve a change in an independent variable, or IV, with the effects being measured. The effects are known as the dependent variable, or DV. There are four main types of experiment. Laboratory experiments are one type. These are conducted in a highly controlled environment. The IV is manipulated to see the impact of the DV, whilst the effects of other variables are minimized as far as possible. For example, giving researchers lists of words to remember, giving them another task to prevent them rehearsing the words, then testing their recall of the information later on. Advantages of lab experiments include that extraneous variables, in other words, things other than the IV that might affect the results, are closely controlled. This means the IV is likely to have affected the DV, increasing the internal validity of the study. Also, research can be easily repeated as there will be a controlled, standardized procedure, increasing the reliability of the results. Disadvantages are that the artificial nature of the setup means that the results may not reflect real life behavior. This reduces the external validity of the study. Also, participants know they are being tested, so may change their behavior or try and guess what the study is attempting to measure. This is known as demand characteristics. Finally, tasks given in the research may not be reflective of everyday tasks, meaning the study may lack mundane realism. In a field experiment, the experimenter manipulates an IV in a more natural setting. For example, Pilyevin in 1969 got a person to collapse on a train when smelling of alcohol or carrying a walking stick and seeing how many people helped in each of the different conditions. Advantages of field experiments are that they tend to have higher mundane realism than lab experiments, therefore, are higher in external validity. Also, often participants won't know they are being studied, so things like demand characteristics are less of an issue. They will be behaving more naturally. Weaknesses are that in field experiments, it is harder to control extraneous variables, so it is harder to know if the IV has affected the DV. In addition, if participants are unaware they are being studied, this raises ethical issues because they haven't given consent to be studied. In a natural experiment, the experimenter studies the effects of a naturally occurring IV. Participants may still be studied in a lab type setting to see the effects, but the IV is not manipulated by the researcher. For example, Williams in 1986 looked at the effects on gender attitudes after the introduction of TV to a small town in Canada. Advantages of these include high external validity. As the IV is naturally occurring, it is very true to life. Also, the effects can be tested of factors that could not be manipulated by the researcher. For example, the effects of a lack of attachment in Romanian orphans. Disadvantages of natural experiments are that there is even less control over extraneous variables than field experiments. So, it is hard to conclude that the IV has changed the DV. Also, participants can't be randomly allocated to conditions, introducing the possibility of bias in the different groups being tested. Finally, naturally occurring IVs may be rare, so studies can't be repeated to check if the results were reliable. In a quasi experiment, the IV is based on an existing difference between people, for example, gender differences in attitudes toward food. The advantage of these is that participants can be tested under controlled conditions, increasing the scientific credibility of the research. The main disadvantage is that participants can't be randomly allocated to conditions, introducing possible confounding variables which may affect the results.